Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Coffee with Carl. I am your host, Carl Zellner, one of the attorneys here with Anderson Business Advisors. And today, our topic is going to be land development. I've been getting some more questions uh, about how to potentially set up a land development deal, or hey, I've come across some vacant land a friend and I would like to develop. So let me, you know, basically tell me how to set this up. When looking at land development, you look at a couple of different things. Number one is developing land is going to be an active income producing activity as well as it is a dealer activity. So we want to, in our active real estate investing, avoid being tagged with dealer status. So active income plus trying to avoid dealer status uh, from a asset tax and asset protection standpoint means we've got to run the development through the corporation somehow. Now, it doesn't have to be run directly through the corporation, but it should be done in an LLC owned by the corporation. Uh, the other thing we need to start looking at, or we would look at, is how are you going to develop the project? Are you going, oh, let's just put it this way, most commonly, depending on the number of units or number of houses and the size of the property, chances are you're doing your development in stages, meaning running utilities, foundations, framing, sort of do it all as one large swath, uh, but in increments. I have had folks who've developed, say, different row homes, things like that, who will do, actually do one at a time. And in that scenario, it may make more sense to sort of break out the project into different LLCs because they're going to be selling at different times. Uh, but realistically, if I'm looking at a development, there's a couple different ways to, there's, as I mentioned, a couple different ways to do it in that you can just hold it in one single LLC. And by the time they're ready to sell, you'll sell them out of that LLC. Uh, the other thing to look at is where's the money coming from? Do you have private financing? Are you using a bank to carry most of the loan? Uh, you want to make sure that project is secured or there's some creditor in line first before somebody else uh, potentially sues you. So if I have, say, a few friends who want to go in on a deal, uh, we're all going to save a small deal. We each put up, I don't know, a million bucks each. Then what will happen or what should happen is we'll create an LLC that will actually hold the money. I would then loan that money over to the a development entity, which is be an LLC owned by, wholly owned by a corporation, or at least my proportion will be owned by my corporation. And then I'm going to lien the property. I'm going to lien the property for the value of the money we're investing. So that way, if say something does happen and we do get sued, uh, my partners and I are first in line to get paid as creditors versus the person who's suing on the project and is going to try, try to take the valuable assets. So it's very similar to, say, even smaller projects, single family projects, if you want to secure money you're investing, but on a much grander scale. So usually, <clears throat> so on a smaller project, we'd be looking at six figures, usually with development, depending on, oh, not really depending on the size, usually start at a few million dollars just due to the investment and in getting the properties up to running. Now, if you're buying a partial investment or something that somebody else basically did a lot of the legwork on and abandoned, uh, could be a different scenario, but for the most part, it'd be the same. It'd just be a lesser amount of money to finish the project. So that's generally how you would do land development. Uh, this is one of those areas you really need to have an individual consult on uh, just because each of the deals can be a little bit different, especially given where you're at. If you're just buying, say, vacant property in Texas and there's no utilities, no, I don't know, no, nothing there really, uh, it just pays to have a bit of a conversation. Uh, just to number one, you can sort of start looking at the numbers. Number two, you want to make sure it's a, a viable investment. Uh, some folks that will run into it who are developing have no don't know the cost of actually getting the permitting and everything in place. So it's just a good time to have a good conversation. Um, so we're at our time for today's coffee with Carl. I want to thank you all for joining. It's been fun. I'm glad it uh, seems like some folks are out there watching. So I hope you continue watching. And as always, we put out a ton of free content. So Toby and Clint, 
and Michael do podcasting. We've got YouTube videos. Go out there and grab some of your favorite subjects and uh, enjoy. I mean, we, we bring on professionals. We bring on people who, who are been successful in many different areas. So I would encourage you to say, hey, you know, if you're into a certain area of investing, grab onto that area and learn as much as you can because we bring people who actually do the work and have been successful in that field. So most times you can pick up something. So until next time, thanks for joining me with Coffee with Carl. I'll catch you on the next episode and uh, take advantage of those free educational opportunities that are out there. Bye. Thank you.